I love to hear her sing. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, and that is a beautiful song. It is no secret what God can do. You know, he's put it in his word time and time again, the things that he can do for us. And a lot of the times we miss out just because we don't take time to read the word to find out what he can do for us. So we need to uh, read it regularly so that we do have it. If you wish to read with me today, I'm going to be reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. We want to remember to pray for our pastor's wife. She's, I think, worked hard to be a good pastor's wife since she's been here, and she's succeeded. And I think I'm probably as good a judge at that as anyone there is because I've been married to a pastor's wife for 57 years, you know. So uh, I know a little bit about that. Now, Brother David, I know you're watching, so I want to say this. You'll take notice that I am wearing a suit today. I thought you needed an example <laughs> of how a pastor should look when he got in the pulpit. You know, our, our uh, Sunday school lesson this morning told us not to retaliate against our enemies, but it did not say one word about getting even with our friends who pull dirty tricks on us. <laughs> okay. The, uh, but we do ask that you pray for us as I speak this morning. And uh, we do need to pray for Monica and pray for Brother David because this affects him too. And we have other members in our church. Our secretary is out, you know, and, and her family. And we need to be praying for these people that are sick. And uh, we're going to try to get a shot, so maybe we'll miss it. But um, it is something that is affecting you know, it was a long time before it came into our church, but now there are several people that have it, and we need to, to be praying for them. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7 through 9. I'm going to be preaching today on a place called hell. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in a flame of fire and vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would just guide me as I speak this morning. Give me the words that these people should hear. And Lord Jesus, if there's one here that does not know you as their Savior, we pray that they'll hear this word and that they'll take heed to it and they'll come to know you as their Savior. For we ask these things in your blessed and holy name. Amen. You know, hell is a subject that I think probably isn't preached on enough. I probably didn't preach on it enough when I was pastoring. But as we look at this, we need to realize that it's important that the world know there is a hell. You know, Satan, the evil spirit and the enemy of all things that are good, has tried to desensitize hell. You know, we have all kinds of things out there. You hear jokes, you see cartoons, cursings and television. We even have in Rome and the Vatican a Catholic Pope who says there is no hell. People, Jesus said there is a hell. So there is a hell. And we need to realize that and we need to understand it. And we need to understand the seriousness of it. Even though there are all kinds of things marketed today to try to take the sting and the fear and the horror out of hell. And we need to realize that Jesus felt that it was important that people know there was a hell 
because he spoke over 200 times about it in the New Testament. So when we consider that, we need to realize that it's important. You take the New Age religions of the world today are trying to phase it out. They're trying to design a religion that makes people feel good but won't necessarily take them to heaven and keep them out of hell. You know, as we look at it today, we need to realize that as Jesus preached on hell, it was because he did not want people to go there. And that's the reason that I'm preaching on it today is because I don't want people to go there. You know, Brother David mentioned in a sermon a week or two ago that he didn't want his worst enemy to go there. And that's the way I feel. I don't want anybody, no matter how rotten they are, to go to hell. And the thing about it is, it doesn't matter how rotten a person is, Jesus made a way for them to skip it for them to miss hell. So we need to realize that it is important that we preach on hell. You know, the Lord said that uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus wanted to see everyone in heaven. He wanted to see everyone come to repentance. We should want everyone to come to repentance. And as we look at this, we need to realize that it's important that we give out the word of God, both the gospel and what the consequences are to the people that are not paying attention and are not listening. We need to realize that it's important that people have a choice and that they know that they have a choice. You see, hell is not something that God sends people to. It's something that people make a choice and go there. And if their choices are bad and they love sin rather than trying to do things right, trying to trust Jesus as their savior, then there is one place. As I said before, God made a way for them to escape that. In John 3, 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we find that Jesus has made a way. Now, I could not live a perfect life. I'm human. But Jesus was able to live a perfect life. Jesus was able to live that life and go to Calvary's cross and take my sins. He said, and he did is take them. He became sin for me that I might miss hell. Okay, we find that Jesus preached on hell because he thought that it, he wanted people to have an understanding of what it was. Pardon me, I got away from my mic. And, and as he had an understanding of, of what it was. And he wanted the people to understand. And people, if we as God's children would just get a slight understanding of what hell really is, we could do some more soul winning. And we would do more soul winning. There's times that we forget the consequences that are there. And we need to realize that it would motivate people to be saved. Well, there are some people who say, now, preacher, I don't believe in scare tactics. Why not? Hell's a place to be scared of. I would be scared to death if I didn't know I was going to miss it. If I didn't know that Jesus Christ had already been there for me. If I didn't know that I have the promise to be with him in heaven. What exactly is hell? Well, hell is God's vengeance. As I read in verse 8 right here, in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we find that it is God's vengeance. 
But he's a loving and a caring God. People, we need to realize there comes a time when he's going to get tired of sin. He's going to get tired of sin on this earth. And he's going to get tired of the slackness in people. And he's going to say, this is enough. This is enough. We need to realize that it's important that we do it. You know, we hear much preaching on love, grace, peace. And we should have some, some preaching on love and grace and mercy. Because Christ provided it. But at the same time, we need to have some preaching on what the consequences are. Another thing, hell is God's punishment. If we read in the ninth verse, he said, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? So as we look at this, we need to realize that, yes, it's, a, it's punishment for sin. And God did not provide hell for people. He made it for Satan and his angels. But at the same time, if people choose to go there, it's their choice. As we think about this, we need to think about it. People, hell is not a picnic. It's not a playground. It's not the thing that the cartoons and the jokes make it out to be. It's something that's going to be some kind of terrible. You know, he tells us it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. As we look at that scripture in Hebrews 10 and 31, if you want to ever want to look at it with it, it tells us what God can be like. And we need to realize the importance of it. It's a place of darkness. People have all kinds of ideas. Carolyn used to work with a woman that said, well, her son was going to hell, so she was going to the, go there so she could be with him. People, you're not going to be with anybody. You're going to be all alone. You're going to be in such darkness that you can't see anybody. The only person that you know is around you is the one that when you're floating through this lake of fire and brimstone is the one you bump into and that you hear screaming in your ears like you're screaming. Jude, verse 13, calls it the blackness of darkness. The blackness of darkness. Many years ago, I was driving a charter bus. I had a bunch of kids from over in Illinois, and we went to Onondaga Cave. We got down in the cave, and they turned the lights out. And they told us to hold our hand in front of our face. And you could hold your hand an inch in front of your face, and you could not see it. The blackness of darkness. And that's what hell's going to be like. It's a place of fire. You know, as we think about this, we need to realize that fire is about the worst pain a person can get. Jude, verse 7, calls it eternal fire. Revelations 20 and 10 calls it a lake of fire and brimstone. Matthew 13 and 42 calls it a furnace of fire. People, we need to understand that it is a place of torment. That it is a place that people are going to not be able to stand, but they can't get out of it. Let me tell you a story about a man I knew. His name was Zach Henderson. He was a tough old cowboy. I know you all think that all the cowboys come from Texas, but they don't. The Ozarks have some too. He owned a cattle ranch up there. And one day his wife called Zach. And she said, Zach, our hot water heater has gone out. Can you come light it? When he lit that 
fire, when they struck that match, that whole basement exploded. And he had third degree burns all over his body. And he was on, the, on his way to St. Louis in an ambulance to the burn center and his pastor, Brother Danny Vance, was with him. And I've heard Danny tell this story over and over. And Zach, he said, Brother Danny, I don't like for you to see me like this. He said, this, this is terrible. This is awful. He said, you go back and you preach and you tell people not to go to hell. This is awful. You know, this is something we need to realize that fire is the worst pain you can get into. I remember when, just before me and Carolyn were married, I was working in physical therapy in a hospital and there was a lady came in with burns and they brought her down and we put her in a Hubbard tank and we had to put salt in the water to make it equal to her skin and turn it on real slow so it would wash away the putrid flesh that was left on her body. And we did this for about three days and then she, they sent her to St. Louis. And in about three more days she died. It was horrible, the burns all over her body. But as we look at hell, there's not going to be any part of the body that's not going to be burned. I remember a baby they brought down to us that an iron had fell off of an ironing board and landed on its back and it had the print of that on its back. And the terrible, the baby lived. But as we look at this, we need to realize the pain and the suffering that is going to happen in hell. It's a place of torment. Matthew 8 and 12 says, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Revelation 14 and 11 said, the smoke of their torment went up forever and ever. Never ending. You know, it's hard for us to understand eternity because everything we do, we mark with a clock or a calendar. You know, it's this time of day and I can do this. Brother Phil sent me a order of service and everything was set down just to the minute. I said, I'm sure glad I'm the last one to speak. <laughs> he can't box me in that way, you know. <laughs> and, and, but as we look at this, we need to realize that everything we do is set by time, either a clock or a calendar. And everything has a beginning and an end. But eternity has no beginning and has no end. It's forever and ever and ever. My grandson probably explained it better than I could when he was just about that tall. He was in kindergarten and he said something about infinity and I said, boy, what do you know about infinity? He said, Pa, it's numbers that just go on and on and on and never quit. And that's eternity. It just goes on and on and on and never quit. And this torment goes on and on and on and it never quits. It's a place of bondage. Matthew chapter 23 and 13 said, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him to outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. People, we need to realize there's gonna be no hilarity in hell. It's gonna be weeping, it's gonna be gnashing of teeth. It's gonna be something that we can't even imagine. It's also a place of memory. You see, in Luke 16, we see the rich man. And he was cast into hell. And he remembered his life. He remembered his brothers. 
He remembered Lazarus that had laid at his gate and begged. People, if there are those that are under the sound of my voice today, whether you're here or online, if you do not know Christ, you're going, even if you do not trust in him, you're going to remember this sermon. You're going to remember your opportunities to trust in Jesus Christ. You're going to remember every time someone mentioned Christ and his gospel to you. It's going to be a time of remembrance. Brother Phil, as you come, it's also, uh oh, is this on? Yes. It's also going to be, have one more thing that's worse than the fire. It's worse than the darkness. It's worse than the remembrance. It's going to be the fact that people are going to realize that they are eternally separated from God. That's going to be the worst torture in hell. So if you're here today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, as Brother Downing comes in the other building, we want to give you an invitation to come and to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today.